Welcome to the Capital Gains Tax Solutions Podcast, where we believe that high net worth individuals and their professional teams shouldn't have to struggle to find great options for deferring capital gains taxes. Don't let your failure to plan become your plan to fail, especially when the deferred sales trust might be one of the best ways for you to exit your highly appreciated assets and defer the capital gains taxes so you can continue to grow your wealth. You are not in the wrong place. I am Jessica Lanning. I'm your host today. I'm filling in for Brett Swartz. Each episode, we are joined by some of the leading wealth advisors, business and real estate experts, and leadership specialists to share ideas, tell their deal stories, and share their inspiration so together we can make complex tax deferral strategies simple and passive income plans achievable. Uh, We're taking a little bit of a detour here today. Um, Our next guest has developed a proprietary technology that puts real pen and ink to paper, for real, with a robot to scale handwritten communication to help their clients stand out from their competition with their clients, their customers, and their employees. Uh, He is the CEO of Simply Noted, and he is building on a decade of sales and marketing experience, uh, marketing industry experience. Please welcome Rick Elmore to the podcast. Welcome, Rick. Thanks so much for having me. This is great. Yeah, it's good to have you here. Okay, so please tell us a little bit more about your story and what your current focus is right now. Yeah, so my uh, my background actually started uh, in California. Uh, I was an athlete, um, grew up playing sports, and uh, I was lucky enough. I have a twin brother. We got football scholarships to go to the University of Arizona and play football there. Had a pretty good career, and then was drafted in 2011 and um, played. You know, got to play out my childhood dream for for three years. But after that, I got into medical device sales. Um, was pretty uh, pretty successful as well. I was lucky enough to have a good career. Rookie of the year, my first year, then top 1% or top five uh, sales rep in my company, um, you know, for five, almost six years. And then just really wasn't, you know, scratching that competitive itch that I wanted. So I went back and did my MBA in 2017 and wanted to start a business. And that's where the idea of Simply Noted began. Um, I was in a marketing class and being in sales, I was trying to absorb and use everything that I was learning at that time. And I had a marketing professor talking about just the success rates in marketing. You know, everybody wants to grow their business. How do you market it? You know, it's a very important cornerstone of every business. And everything was super marginal. Emails, cold calling, direct mail, everything was like 8%, 12%, 18%. And then he ended the, uh, the uh, lecture, like kind of half-heartedly joking, like, hey guys, you know, like what still works really well is a good old-fashioned handwritten thank you letter. Like they're extremely rare. They almost always get open. They have a 99% open rate and people like cherish them because, you know, they're extremely rare. And I thought that was so, you know, so obvious and like who is not going to open a handwritten note and who's not going to appreciate it, especially now in today's digital age where we're all competing, you know, you know, in digital notifications and noise, right? You got social, email, Slack, Twitter, you know, your phone is always going off. You're just inundated with it. And I had 400 clients at that time. So I was like, there's no way to efficiently sit down and write 400 letters. Like it just takes forever. My wife and I actually, it took us two weekends, like like six or seven hours to sit down and just write some handwritten envelopes for, for holiday cards, like to put a print holiday card in it. And now we have kids. So there's like no more of that on the weekends, oh, right? Yeah. No, yeah. That's done. So um, <laughs> yeah. long story short, um, kind of had this cool little business idea. I was like, if there's a way that we can scale this or automate it, you know, this would be extremely valuable in the business world because there's just nothing like it. And at the time there was somebody doing it, their name was Bond, but they were more focused in the wedding industry, which I thought was just like the worst niche you can ever like focus on because bridezillas, right? Like no, they take I, their yeah. feet, right? They take <laughs> the forever worst. to make a decision. They always change it. They're super stressed out. The the list always changes. I was like, and they raised like a million dollars to start. I was like, man, like whoever whoever pitched that in a, a venture meeting must have been a great salesman because that wedding industry is not the right one to do it. But anyways, um started working with the mail house here in, in Phoenix, Arizona. Flew some technologies in from all over the world, China. Basically, we're like pen plotters. And um, I got this pen plotter, which was just a hand-fed pen plotter, you know, really cheap technology to write out 500 letters. It took me forever to do it because it was hand-fed. And um, plus, I really didn't know what I was doing. And I used them kind of as like a sales tool to send out to some customers that was not working with me at the time. And that first 500 I sent... Um, I got 20, it was over, it was like 28, 30 people to call me back. 
my monthly commission quote or my monthly quote at the time was like 39 or $50,000. It was around there. And out of those 500 letters, 28 called me back and they were like, Hey Rick, like, first off, this is cool. Like nobody sends me like a handwritten letter anymore. Like, this sounds good. Like, let's set up a lunch and talk about it. And I got $280,000 in sales in like two months. And my, like my company was just freaking out. Like, Rick, what are you doing? And I was freaking out too. Cause I was like, first time it ever, people are coming to me to buy. But, um, yeah, it worked. I, I was amazed. Um, my clients loved it. You know, I kind of had that entrepreneurial seizure, as they call it. Your body just goes crazy. The light bulbs explode. Like, this is the best idea in the world. And then we just got to work. You know, so and then fast forward, you know, about four and a half years, we have 11 full time employees, 25 part time, mostly warehouse quality control. Um, we're going to be on the Inc. 5000 this year. We're going to have, we built our own robot, spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on doing that, six patents. So it's kind of been a whirlwind. But yeah, that's a little bit about my background. Nice. So one of the things we like to talk about here um, at the Capital Gains Tax Solutions podcast is the gifts that we bring to the world, right? Yeah, maybe it's your your particular product in this particular company in this moment, but what are your superpowers? Like, you know, what's your, what are your unique abilities? What are you bringing to this business, to your entrepreneurial yeah. world that is unique a, to you? That's a great question. So this is actually something I'm extremely passionate about is, you know, those intangible skills that I've been able to develop, you know, in my life. Um, and it really was through athletics. Um, if it wasn't for my experience of playing football for 20 years, I probably wouldn't be the, you know, the entrepreneur I am today. Um, the grit, the perseverance, the hard work, the teamwork, you know, good culture, good locker room, uh, you know, culture, um, the can do attitude, highly competitive <laughs> chip on your shoulder, right? All these things that are intangibles, the things you can't teach. Um, I truly believe, and you'll you'll see this all the time. Like you, know, it, you can hire. Um, you know, you want good attitudes when you hire because you can teach them, right? You can teach them how to do things. But if you don't have like that good intangible skill, right, of having a good attitude or all those things that you can't teach, like you're just not going to be successful. And I think that's what's really made this business super successful is everything that I learned as an athlete. And that's probably why you know most of these medical companies like to hire athletes because of all those things as well. But yeah, it's just been, you know, I have no software background, no engineering background, no electrical, mechanical engineering background, no industrial automation background, no website development background. And that's really what I've done here in the last four years is built a robotic software and electrical engineering and <laughs> industrial automation back or company. So yeah, I, I think um, it's looking at, you know, your background and those skills that you've developed and how you can um, apply them to new things and get better is, you know, a, a real talent that a lot of people um, need to realize that they have and they can use. Excellent. So our topic for today's show is the importance of relationships in business um, and how to do handwritten cards efficiently and on an automated basis, because that's just what you bring to it at the moment. But let's talk mm -hmm. about that, the importance of building relationships in business. And I think, you know, your story about your your professor talking about how handwritten notes, right, they're, they're not mm -hmm. common. They get people's attention. Um and it does help build that relationship. So talk mm -hmm. a little bit more about that. You know, what what do you, what have you learned about that? What can yeah. our listeners take away, you know, who are also entrepreneurs and trying to grow their business? What can they learn from that? Talk to us. Yeah, well, first off, being an entrepreneur, I I mean, and being in sales previously, I knew how important it was like loyalty is royalty when it comes to business and sales. Otherwise, we're chasing our tail and filling a leaky bucket, right? You know, if you're trying to sit there and constantly add new clients, um to your business every single year, you're going to get burnt out. You're not going to be able to scale. You're going to have a business that is going to struggle. And if you want to sell it someday, it's going to be a lot harder to sell. But, um, you know, why we believe so much um, in the service that we provide is because, you know, I grew up in a generation before cell phones. Um, I didn't get my first cell phone until I was 16. So handwritten notes, you know, to my classmates where I saw a box of handwritten notes from people I used to write them to in like middle school. Like that's like how mm -hmm. special they are. Also, when I got recruited to play uh, college and football, any coach that sent me something printed, um, it didn't even, you know, wasn't didn't mean that much. But then when a coach sent something handwritten, like that was something I walked around. I was like, check this out. Like this coach sent me this, right? And then I played for uh, John um, or Jim Harbaugh in uh, in San Francisco, the 49ers in 2012. And he was actually a coach at Stanford when I was at U of A. So I always played against him. So 
um, when I left uh, San Francisco, he actually wrote me a handwritten note, just like thanking me for my contributions to the team and all this stuff. And that's actually a keepsake. So um, handwritten notes, you know, especially in today's digital age, they're incredibly important. Um, when's the last time you sat there and you you got a, a text message and you know you printed it out and you you kept it and put it in a you know your your keepsake box? You know, it just doesn't happen, right? There's just something about it. Um, it's just so genuine and real. But when you think about um, you know, your customer experience and relationships and how that can uh, uh, affect your business. You know, there's tons of stats. I've been quoting um, this American Express um, customer service um, study that they did recently. Um, they said, you know, by just increasing your customer retention by 5%, your year over year revenue will grow 25 to 95%. And I thought that was incredibly powerful. Um, also, they said uh, customers who don't feel, or customers that don't feel appreciated. 33% of your customers don't feel appreciated and they'll try somebody else just for the sake of trying somebody else. Um, that's one third of your business. Think about that. Like you have to replace one third of your business every year because you, and I get it, right? You don't have the time to pick up the phone, go grab lunch, you know, get ingrained in their lives and build that deep relationship. Like what's a good way to do it? And we believe, you know, a handwritten note a couple of times a year keeps you top of mind. It's appreciated. Um, and there's just really nothing else like it, um, you know, without going crazy overboard and sending like a $200 box of gifts, you know, it's just something authentic and real. Well, and I think that would make a difference with your employees too, right? That's part of what you mm -hmm. also recommend your service for. I mean, with yeah. all the quiet quitting that you hear about these days, right? Yeah. Employees are just showing up, they're punching a clock, they're doing their work, but they're not doing anything extra. They're feeling unappreciated, underpaid, right? The yeah. whole story um yeah. talk about a little bit how handwritten notes make a difference there well again it's the same thing right relationships um within our business are we we've had the uh, our same group of five people here that have been with us for the last three years and they're like family um they've been here through the thick and thin but again you know you're in a bigger company I was at striker right it was a company with like four thousand employees like, how can you make sure that person who is just hired, that associate sales rep who's in the front lines getting beat up, yelled at, spit at, you know, unappreciated, how can you make sure that they feel appreciated and they're committed to you and the team and being loyal to your company? Um, there's only so much time, you know, a manager has in the day. And there's so many responsibilities we all have, you know, from work to our families, our kids, our own health, right? Like, how are you going to do that? And again, I'm sure. Um, like that American Express study, if you know you make your employees feel appreciated, you know they're going to stick around a lot longer. And we all know how expensive, as business owners, how expensive it is to hire a new employee. I mean, it's it's even way more than acquiring a new customer. And if you hire and bring on a new uh, employee, it takes like six months to get them up, get going, right, train them, and then if they leave, like <laughs> it's just yeah. So it's again, it's. It's loyalty, it's relationships, it's getting them to buy into you, your mission, right? Making sure they know you care about them, right? And again, that, you know, our service, again, is a good way to do that efficiently. So we're recording this podcast a couple of weeks before Thanksgiving here in 2022. And I just finished writing all of my client thank you uh, notes. Sure, <laughs> hands a little sore. <laughs> hands a little sore. You know, yeah. I don't write anything anymore. I can write about five at a time and then I have to take yeah. a break because <laughs> yeah. it just gets exhausting. But talk a little bit about that experience. Like, how nice it would have been to um, be able to say something heartfelt, right? I could have done that mm -hmm. um, with, you know, your product and been able to publish that and not only dread or be so glad when it's done because I have to do that for another year, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but wow, what if I could be doing that all year round? Yeah. Um, so talk about how your product is helping people with that. What do people say? Do you have to write three yeah. pages to make a note impactful? No. Like what, what, what does yeah, it kind of look like? That's a great question. So the first question we usually get is like, are they all the same card? Right. Cause they think you're just literally writing the same message over and over. And that's why, you know, this technology that we made the investment in building, um, it needed to be done. Um, because we've built the software, the handwriting engine, the mechanical robot to allow you to write ex extremely hyper personalized custom cards at scale. So it's just like mail merge. As long as the data is in a spreadsheet, it's like high first name, 
you know, we love working with you and company. We plug in first name company. You can even go on your Excel sheet and just type out like, you know, in one column, like a, a special sentence that one person and plug that sentence into the card and get even crazier um, personalization, hyper, you know, closer to that person in that card. It's just a lot quicker to do it that way. But yeah, that's what we're doing is like hyper personalization at scale. It's not just a, the same carbon copy printed letter at scale. So the purpose of what we're trying to do is make it look like you sat down at your desk, picked up your pen and wrote it on your stationery. You put it in the envelope, you put a real forever stamp on it and put it in the mail. Um, you know, if we're not doing that, we're not doing a good job. We want to be an extension of your business to help you build those deep relationships, you know, if it's with customers or clients. So talk about how you're differentiating from other companies that are doing this. Um, yeah. Look, I get a, a card from my state farm agent, right? That is clearly not written by him, but it's made to look like it is. Yeah. Um, it's not the same. So, so what are you doing differently? Yeah. So there are a lot of companies out there that basically they start in and out of printing press. So we have a printing press in our warehouse. It's a 16 foot long printer. Um, what they do is they just use like a handwriting font and laser print it on a piece of paper. We actually start at the printing press um, and just print out your card. And then from the card, we put it in our handwriting robot. And the handwriting robot actually writes with the ballpoint pen. Um, unlike those companies like your State Farm agent, the really good way to tell, even though you probably can tell that laser printed font is fake, um, is to lick your thumb and try to smear the ink. If it smears, it's 100% written by pen. If it doesn't smear, you know, <laughs> it's obviously printed. Plus, you know, our robots, they dig into the paper so you can see the pen, like, you know, the pen indentation. So, um, you know, if if you're somebody who's looking for a card for like four cents, you know, or something like that, you know, that's why a lot of these people do that. But, you know, we kind of cater to, you know, business owners, presidents, you know, political figures, you know, people where that relationship is hyper impactful, hyper personal relationship matters. Clients are, you know, are worth more than $500 um, because, you know, our service is a little bit more expensive because it takes way longer than it takes to print off a, a postcard. But yeah, um, we built our own technology um, because it we needed to. Um, you know, there was, we started with a pen plotter and then we upgraded to an auto pen. Um, both were okay technology to get started. But in order to deliver the best product, you know, we had to improve on some things that haven't been improved on in over 30, 40 years, <laughs> like technologies that were made in like the 80s. Um, so, yeah, um, we had to improve the throughput. So the way that the order gets from the software to the robot, that couldn't be done with the old technology, the capacities, the paper feeders, um, uh, the actor, the pen plotter didn't have a paper feed. The capacity in the auto pens really low. So someone had to sit there and replace the paper all the time. Um, the handwriting engine, ours is completely unlimited. Um, the pen plotters and the uh, auto pen are restricted. So you can only have a certain amount of characters in a handwriting style. Plus they didn't have a lot of um, abilities to manipulate the handwriting to make it look even more real. Um, you know, they're running off old third party softwares. So, you know, ours is completely open and completely unlimited. So if you wanted to have 200 A's, 200 B's, 200 C's um, in your handwriting style, we actually go and plug in. And this is getting into the hyper details. We, we talk about ligatures, you know, how letters connect to each other. What's the E look like at the end of a sentence, at the beginning of a word? It's like I can nerd out and talk about it for an hour but um, or geek out. But um yeah, we've we've left no stone unturned in ensuring that the machines that we've built and the product that we've built is as genuine as possible. Because the last thing you want to be known as someone who's sending a fake, fake handwritten note, right? So we wanted to make sure that our clients who trust us are getting the best, you know, possible product possible. Yeah, I love that you're changing the standard on relationships to whether or not I can lick my thumb and rub it across the ink. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, it's a it's, it's an easy test to do. I do it all doing the time. I'm like, huh. Yeah. yeah, if I see something, I mean, I don't see it too often, but I, I'll check that. You know, and I, Renewal by Anderson. You know, they do a lot of these fake handwritten stuff. You know, that window company. Yep. Yeah, and they do a lot of that. I'm just like. This is so fake. It's just so hey, fake. Renewal by Anderson, if you're listening to this yeah. podcast. <laughs> yeah, I know. You need yeah. to give Rook a call. <laughs> yeah, I know. We've tried. Well, you know, yeah. <laughs> they do it all in-house. Yeah. But I know. I get it. But maybe not yeah. someday. Who knows? Yeah. Um, 
Yeah. So here, you know, the capital gains tax solutions, um, you know, we are building deep relationships with our clients. We really mm-hmm. want them to, um, when they are considering selling their business or selling a piece of real estate or whatever it might be, some highly appreciated mm-hmm. asset, you know, that's a big transaction. Um, and, you know, the the more personal touch there is, I, I get this, the, the better that transaction goes, the more success the client has, the better mm-hmm. my business um, succeeds as a result. Yep. Um, it really is providing, please, you know, people a safe place to land, especially when you're talking to people about their money. Um and, you know, so that's what we're doing here at Capital Gains Tax Solutions as well. Um, so you're ready for the lightning round? Absolutely. Fire away. All right. Your favorite book that you've read or gifted in the last 12 months. It's always Michael E. Gerber. If you're a business owner, I'm sure a lot of your business owners will read this. I actually met Michael E. Gerber on Thursday last week. He was here in Phoenix. Um, it's incredible how just a, a short, quick, easy to read book can change somebody's mind on being all about doing everything in your business. It's like, you're just so engulfed by everything you want to do um, and get your, get, get from not working, you know, in it and getting out of it and working on it. And for me, when I first started, you know, I used to be in sales. I was working in the, in the business in sales all the time. So my mind was focused on being in it, right. Versus being on the outside, improving the product, improving the processes, setting up good systems. Like think about the future. How are we going to scale this? Right. Right. In order to um, build that strong, you know, foundation of business to something you can see on the future and not be the statistic of 95% of businesses fail in five years, you have to work on your business. And that was what I got out of that. So anybody who's, you know, young in their career um, or even a young entrepreneur, I always say that Michael E. Gerber e-myth for sure. Very good. So uh, along those lines, what's your favorite leadership quote or theme that you strive to live by? Leadership quote. Oh, that's a, a great one. Um, I don't know. It's a great one. Well, theme, I mean, I, I lead from the front. I'm always doing everything I ask my team to do. Um, I'd have to think of a good quote um, and, and circle back to that. But I am a true believer that you lead by example. So um, everything that I've had my team do, I've figured out how to do and, and showed them how to do it. So I'm not asking them to do things that I don't know how to do. And that's, um, you know, learning, you know, everything about these robots to operating our website to, to you know, showing how to do uh, more efficient workflows because I'm obsessed about it. But then they get on there and they approve on it and then they show me. So we're just going back and forth all the time. So um, I try to lead from the front all the time. I don't want to be somebody who's, you know, just pushing it, pointing fingers and say, you go do that. You know, um, I try to do that. Yeah. It makes you better at hiring people too. Right. Yeah. You yeah. Yourself, now you know what you need to hire for. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. So imagine you could go back in time and you could talk to your 25 year old self. What would you want to tell that person? Learn software and learn sales. hundred <laughs> percent. Learn software <laughs> development. Um, you know, I, I went back into my MBA as an idea of like just to spark an idea. But now that I'm 34 years old, um, yeah, the, you have to develop those hard skills. And that's what a lot of people who want, you know, bigger and better things like they want for it, but you have to build it. And when someone says build it, what they're really meaning is like you have to develop a hard skill that somebody's willing to pay for. Um, and you know, full stack development, web development, software engineering, something like that, you know, where the future is going. And then, you know, going to a degree that's really hyper focused on sales. You know, I, I did the Dale Carnegie sales school a while back. I thought that was great, but going through more of a sales minded school as well, teaching you about CRMs and prospecting and follow up and etiquette and how to handle yourself at a dinner. Cause those are real life hard skills that you're going to use for the rest of your life. So software development and sales, 1000%. Excellent. Yeah. Okay. What are you most curious yeah. about right now? So I'm constantly living way outside my comfort zone. So, um, you know, building software, um, these robots, it's just something I've never thought I'd ever do. What I'm really curious is about where this business is going to be in five years. Cause I, I envision it really being a hundred million dollar business, but to go from, we are to there. It's just mind blowing. So, um, I'm trying to figure out how to find the right pieces to plug them into, you know, this, this business, cause I'm not going to be able to go near nowhere near that without bringing the right people on, you know, we're going to need somebody who overlooks, you know, the operation who has, 
real experience like in industrial automation doing high high volumes of orders and how to manage it track it software development you know we have 300,000 users on our website last month what's it going to what's it going to be when there's 3 million you know like it's going to crash servers right so right now i'm worried about where am i going to find the right people <laughs> because it's really hard to find the right people it really is you can't you can't do anything without anyone like you can go fast alone only so far right and then you get so far and you're like man i can't keep going without you know some help and we need to find those people so you've had so much success in your career or careers right not everybody gets to play in the nfl or go back to business school or do whatever it is that you want to do or be successful in sales at the company that you are at um what's the one habit you try to practice daily weekly whatever it might be which helps you to stay centered in your values and keep you moving towards your goals yeah well first um my family is everything i do whatever i do for my family um i don't i don't care um i don't want nice cars or a big house so knowing my why is really easy it's really easy to wake up and stay motivated but what happens to a lot of people is they get motivated and then when the motivation goes away they stop and what i'm really good at is being able to continue working at a high level no matter how i'm feeling that day because there's a lot of bad days we all have a lot of bad days and <laughs> from being an athlete it just ingrained in me like you wake up you do the work you compete you go home like you wake up you do the work you compete and go home you're gonna have good days you're gonna have great days terrible days you're gonna have injuries you're gonna have to recover you have to develop like a a fortress in your mind right to just keep moving forward and that's what i've done really well um i know my why i want to take care of my family support those who supported me for the first 35 years of my life 34 um, and make sure everything that I'm doing is going to take care of them. And it's just an incredibly um, intrinsically powerful feeling. And then again, those those skills I developed in football, just no matter what, show up and do the work. And you're already 90% of the way there <laughs> because a lot of people will give up after a year. Yeah, beautiful. Um, yeah, thanks so much for being on the show. I really enjoyed this. And I want to encourage you to keep using your gifts or strengths to be a blessing and a help to others on the planet. Um, I get that grit thing. Keep showing up, right? Yep, it's yep. It, it, it is ninety percent of success, I think, most it of the is. time. Yeah. Um. So for those who want to get in touch with you or learn more about your product, what's the best? Where, where yeah. They go? Yeah. So uh, I'm on LinkedIn all day. It's like my number one source. Um. For like, I guess, business, social networking, I guess. But then simply noted dot com. Um. If you want, we'll send like a free sample kit. I don't know if this is a video podcast, but we do this really nice, like huge sample kit. We send a lot of samples and flyers and case studies and stuff. If you can go to simplynoted.com, just click on the business page and, and just let us know where to ship it. But yeah, um, yeah, just LinkedIn or simplynoted.com. Excellent. Well, that wraps up the show. I want to thank you, the listener, and uh, for listening to another episode of the Capital Gains Tax um, solutions podcast. We again believe that high net worth individuals and their professional teams shouldn't have to struggle to figure out and find great options for deferring capital gains taxes. Don't let your failure to plan become your plan to fail, especially when the deferred sales trust might be one of your best ways to exit your highly appreciated assets and defer the capital gains taxes so you can continue to grow your wealth. Remember, please rate, review, and subscribe this podcast, and we'll see you here next time.